The world's 67th cyclone and the first one in October formed in the Atlantic in the form of Tropical Storm Karen, peaking in the Gulf of Mexico with winds of 65 miles per hour before fizzling out on approach to Louisiana and stalling before dissipating. The storm caused no known damages or fatalities here. Meanwhile, in the western Pacific, Tropical Storm Danas formed and intensified to become a strong typhoon with winds of 145 miles per hour and a minimal central pressure of 929 millibars. It passed through the Ryukyu Islands of Japan and then curved off to the northeast, just north of the mainland. It didn't cause any known fatalities or damages though. Then we had Tropical Storm Nada, a tropical storm that formed on October the 6th in the eastern Pacific that did not affect any land areas throughout its four-day lifespan. It reached a peak wind speed of 65 miles per hour sustained and a minimal air pressure of 997 millibars. Then we had Cyclone Phelan, the second Category 5 storm of the year and the first one in the Indian Ocean, reaching a peak wind speed of 160 miles per hour before weakening slightly as it made landfall in India. It caused 45 fatalities and damages of $696 million. Then on October the 9th, a tropical storm Nari formed and approached the Philippines, making landfall in Luzon just after uh, intensifying fairly rapidly to become a Category 3 typhoon, peaking with winds of 120 miles per hour and an air pressure of 944 millibars. It caused 87 fatalities and $71 million in damages in the Philippines and in Vietnam, where it made its second landfall. And then we had another intense storm in the western Pacific, Typhoon Wifo, on, which formed on October the 10th near Guam and headed towards the northwest at first, peaking as a Category 4 storm with winds of 130 miles per hour before curving back towards the northeast, dissipating on October the 15th near Japan. It caused 41 fatalities but no known damages. Back in the eastern Pacific we had a tropical storm, Tropical Storm Octave, forming on October the 13th and not lasting too long, just over two days, peaking with winds of 65 miles per hour and a minimal air pressure of 995 millibars. It did make landfall but didn't cause any fatalities and only small amounts of damage. This was swiftly followed by Tropical Storm Priscilla, which formed on October the 14th and only lasted a day or two before losing Tropical Storm status and eventually becoming a remnant low on the 17th. It remained out at sea and so did not cause any fatalities or damages in any land areas. Back near Guam, another tropical cyclone formed on October the 16th and dipped towards the south at first before moving back towards the north, to making a U-turn on itself really, and becoming Typhoon Francisca, peaking as a Category 5 typhoon with winds of 160 miles per hour. It stayed far enough from land areas to not cause any damages as it passed near the Japanese islands. Back in the eastern Pacific, the strongest storm of the year there formed Hurricane Raymond, peaking with wind speeds of 125 miles per hour and an air pressure of 949 millibars as it stalled near the coast of Mexico. Even though it was fairly close to land, it didn't cause any fatalities and only small amounts of damage. That was the strongest storm this year in the eastern Pacific. Meanwhile, another storm formed in the western Pacific, ty Typhoon Lakima, and became the second Category 5 in a row in that region, reaching peak wind speeds of 160 miles per hour, but remaining out at sea, and so did not cause any significant effects on land. In the Atlantic, we had Tropical Storm Lorenzo, a fairly short-lived storm only lasting three days out over open waters, forming on the 21st and dissipating on the 24th of October, reaching peak wind speeds of 50 miles per hour and an air pressure of 1,003 millibars, not causing any significant effects on land either. Then we had our first storm of the 2013-14 Southern Hemisphere seasons, this time in the southwestern Indian Ocean, forming on the 27th and dissipating just a day later on the 28th, Cyclone 1. It reached a peak wind speed of only 40 miles per hour and so was a very weak storm and didn't cause any significant effects on land. The world's 80th storm of the year was Typhoon Crosa, forming on October the 29th in the Philippine Sea and grazed the northern coast of Luzon as a Category 2 typhoon before peaking in intensity out in the South China Sea with winds of 115 miles per hour and an air pressure of 948 millibars. It caused four fatalities and $6 million in damages. The final storm of the eastern Pacific season, Tropical Storm Sonia, formed on the first day of November and dissipated on the 4th over Mexico after making landfall there. It reached a peak wind speed of 45 miles per hour and did not cause any uh, fatalities or damages in Mexico or indeed anywhere. 
The 82nd and the world's strongest storm of the year was Typhoon Haiyan, forming on November the 3rd out in the open Pacific and eventually making landfall in the Philippines as a staggering 195 mile per hour Category 5 storm with an air pressure of around 895 millibars, possibly lower. More information on Haiyan can be found in part 7 of the main feature. Initially forming in the Western Pacific, a tropical depression moved through to the Indian Ocean and became Tropical Cyclone 30W just near the uh, Indian coast and made landfall as a tropical depression on November the 16th. The storm caused 13 fatalities and unknown amounts of damage. On November 14th, a very short-lived depression, Tropical Depression Podal, marked as a tropical storm according to the JMA, um, moved through to the uh, Vietnamese coast, making landfall there as a 35 mile per hour storm with an air pressure of 1,000 millibars. It had 31 fatalities and $168 million of damages attributed to it. On November the 8th, a slow tracking tropical storm formed in the Arabian Sea, not too far from the coast of Somalia, eventually making landfall there. This was Cyclone 3A, reaching a peak wind speed of 45 miles per hour. It caused up to 440 fatalities, at least 140, making it one of the deadliest cyclones in Somalia. The final storm of the Atlantic was Tropical Storm Melissa, initially subtropical when it formed on November the 18th, but after a day or two it became a tropical storm before turning post-tropical on November the 21st near the Azores. It reached a peak wind speed of 65 miles per hour but did not cause any fatalities or damages. Back in the Indian Ocean, Cyclone Helen formed on November the 19th and eventually made landfall in India just as it was turning into a remnant low on November the 22nd. It did reach a peak wind speed of 70 miles per hour whilst a little bit out at sea, uh, but it caused 11 fatalities and unknown amounts of damages. In the Australian region, the first storm of the season formed on November the 20th and became Cyclone Alicia, making landfall in northern Australia over the next few days as a tropical storm and regenerating in the Gulf of Carpentaria, eventually dissipating for good on November the 27th inland in the Northern Territory. As of the upload date, the most recent storm was Cyclone Lehar, the 89th of the, of the year, reaching a peak wind speed of 85 miles per hour, Category 1 equivalent, and a minimum air pressure of 982 millibars. The storm made it to India only just now, dissipating just after making landfall in the Andhra Pradesh region.